DIY PC builders. I'm Trisha Hirschberger, and you are watching DIY in 5, the show where we make high-tech goals attainable for the everyday user. We have arrived at the final episode of our Build Your Own PC series, and if you've been following up until this point, you'll have all your components picked out according to the type of PC you want to build, and you'll even have part of the assembly done. If you're just tuning into this episode and need help choosing components or installing the PSU, CPU, and CPU cooler or RAM, subscribe so that you can see the other videos in the series. Okay, let's pick up right where we left off. Our RAM has just been installed onto the motherboard, but before we're ready to put the motherboard into the case, there's one more step. The I.O. plate should come with your motherboard, and it not only labels each of the ports, but it also closes off the back of the computer from dust and debris. Line it up and push hard. <laughs> That's what she said. Until it locks into place. She did not say that part. Check that the small metal tabs on the back plate touch the metal parts of the connectors from the motherboard. This is to ground them. If they don't line up, just take some needle nose pliers and bend them into place. Now that the integral components are installed on the motherboard, it's time to install the motherboard herself. Most cases don't come with pre-installed risers. These keep the motherboard from directly touching the metal of the case. By placing your motherboard inside the case, you'll see which holes line up with the case and that's where you should screw in the risers. They should have come with your case. Gently slide in the motherboard, pushing the rear panel ports through the I.O. plate. Then lay the motherboard on top of the risers. The screw holes should align and you should be able to screw the motherboard in. I recommend only screwing halfway until you know you've got it right. Also, this is delicate stuff, so don't overscrew. <laughs> Moving on to our GPU. If you've chosen a dedicated GPU for your build, now is the time to install it. The longest PCIe slot on your motherboard is usually the first in the series of slots, and that's where your video card is going to go. First, open the slot however you need to for your case. Then, line up the card's back plate with the slot and the gold connectors. Don't touch them. Then push until it clicks. If you're an overachiever and you're using multiple video cards, you'll need to open more than one slot. When the card is set correctly, it should be exactly parallel to the motherboard. If one side looks a little higher than the other, pull it out and try again. Storage is up next. Depending on your case, you may or may not need screws, any number of tool-free mechanisms, use caddies or trays, need adapters, etc. to install your hard drive. If you're using mSATA or M.2, these usually install into particular slots on the motherboard, and some can even use PCIe slots. Check the manual from your motherboard and from your drive to make sure you know exactly where it goes. Hardware installed? Check! Now it's time to hook it all together. First. Run data cables from your drives to the motherboard. Then run power cables from the PSU to the motherboard. You might need to here. Next, run power to your video card and your drives. The connectors for your drives are usually thin and black. Once you know where everything needs to go, you might want to do some cable management. If you can run your cables around the back of the motherboard or through specific cable management devices, not only will your case look better, but you'll also be setting yourself up for better airflow and better heat management. Now, on to wires. Although often confused, they are different than cables. Connect the power wires from the CPU cooler and other fans to the correct pins on the motherboard. They're usually clearly marked. Connect the wires from the front panel to the appropriate headers. Connect the wires from the lights on your case, power or reset buttons to the pins on the motherboard. These are also normally labeled, but when in doubt, consult your motherboard manual. Okay. The moment has arrived. Some PC builders will power up throughout a build, but for first time builders, I recommend putting everything together before booting up. If you used an anti-static wrist strap, take it off now. Leave the case open so that you can watch it closely. Connect and turn on the monitor. Press the power button and watch the machine turn on with the case still open, but don't touch anything. Check that your fans are spinning, especially the CPU fan. If not, power down right away. If fans are spinning, check the monitor. And if you see the motherboard manufacturer's logo, congratulations, you have successfully built a computer. <sighs> if not, power down and double check all your steps. Let's assume things are going smoothly and you saw that motherboard screen. Now it's time to adjust the BIOS slash UEFI by pressing F1 a few seconds after boot, set date and time, and if you like, the default boot order. At this point, you can install your OS of choice via thumb or optical drive, and feel free to do a victory dance around your room because it's well earned. So that's that. Now that you've created your masterpiece, show it off. 
tweet us pictures of your rig using the hashtag DIYin5. Tell us in the comments what kind of build you did and how it went. If this or any other videos in this series helped you, please give us a like and brag, or <coughs> share with your friends how easy the whole process was once you broke it down. Now, enjoy your rig for years to come. As an added bonus, I imagine you'll be more likely to update components now that you've been inside the guts of your tower and it's not so intimidating. Guys, I've been honored to go on this adventure with you. Thank you. Till next time, I'm Trisha Hirschberger and you've been watching DIY in 5. <laughs>